So we're going to quickly start off with a quick introduction to AI 101. This will be very, very quick, and we're going to go through some use cases. We're going to look at the text-based use cases and then more towards the image-based use cases, and then we'll have a, a talk from the SEO team after that. So the first thing to uh, just go through is like what are large language models? So LLMs, which is the, the kind of abbreviation, and, and the most popular one that we know about is, is ChatGTP. So essentially, a large language model has been trained by training data. So this is where it's taken a huge amount of uh, data, which is a combination of books that have been scanned in, crawls of web pages. Um, so popular one is Web Text 2, which is everything that's from Reddit that's got more than three upvotes goes into the system. And OpenAI, the company who's developed ChatGPT, I'm going to say that wrong so many times today, um, has taken this training data and some other training data. It's a little bit of a secret source that they have. They take that information and they create the large language model. One of the things that they do is they use human uh, reinforced learning feedback. So this is where they'll ask the model a question, it will spit out some information, and then one of the engineers will say, that's not quite right. They'll rewrite it and then retrain the model based on that. So although a lot of these processes are automated, there is a huge amount of human intervention that goes into these models. But all we kind of really need to know is that we give it a text input, so that's the prompt, the request, and we use natural language, so we just write a prompt, and then that gives us a text output. We also get a numerical representation of that data. We don't generally see that, um, but that's the maths behind how that, um, pro that answer was, was generated. So very simply, we have a text input, so can you write me a sentence on the best five pubs in Soho in alphabetical order, and then it produces that in a, a remarkable amount of time really, really quickly. So just taking a quick step back, obviously ChatGTP is the, the tool that's grabbed all the attention. Um, and that's been developed by a company called OpenAI. They're using it in a product called ChatGPT. They're using it in other products as well. And they have lots of different variations of their language models. So their language models have been improving over time. And the most common ones that people are using now are 3.5, 3.5 Turbo and 4. But all the other competitors, all the other tech companies in the industry are catching up with this. So you may have heard about Google and BARD and their model, which uh, Lambda behind that. And then you've got Meta, who've got a similar model, and they'll be using it in different products. So what we're kind of seeing is a bit of a race to arms in terms of developing these models and then the use cases for these models. So how do we access it? So you've probably seen screenshots of this. This is the console. So you can go there. You can pay £20 a month to get the premium version which then means you can get access to the latest version and it's quicker. You select a model and you write a prompt. And in this example, we're asking it to write a table of, of countries in the EU, get the capital cities and get the populations. Uh, the output is generated and then in that chat, it keeps context. So you can ask it another question and say, well, now for each one of those countries, write a small description. Um, and then those chats are saved. It's great in the, our account because we have one account which we all share, so you can see what everybody else has been asking it, who's been trying to write resignation letters, who's trying to write different uh, birthday card suggestions, etc. And as you can see, it generates in, uh, this information quite quickly. The other way, and, and the most interesting way for us, is that you can access it via an API. So programmatically, you don't have to go to the chat GTP console. You can... Um, uh, ask it a question uh, and you'll get that back programmatically. And so this is where they're going to make their money essentially, is that they're going to be selling this service into other tools or into businesses so that you can integrate this into your website, into your app, into your different applications, etc. Um, one of the nods is that uh, there's a really good plugin for Google Sheets and that allows us to prototype quickly. So you go to Google Sheets, search for chat GTP plugin, and then you're able to do that on a, a, a row by row. So you can have 50 questions and you can quickly ask it um, 50 questions all at one time. So that's a really good tool to kind of prototype. So text is not the only input and output that we're going to be talking about today, but obviously the text input, natural language processing input that we're seeing at the moment is the one that's got the most amount of notoriety. Um, but really the key to this technology is combining it with other inputs and then other outputs. So, you know, we've got text as an input, video, images, speech, music, and all those inputs could be outputs as well. And it starts to get interesting when you start to combine two of these together. So a text input with um, a, a, an image input with a view to getting an image out of it. 
So on this slide, um, does anybody know which is the original one? Is it this one with the bed or the TV? Anybody? What do we think? Any suggestions? So this, the TV is the original one? <laughs> Nobody have a bed in it. You've not been to Walthamstow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is from uh, Harp in Walthamstow, and this is a really simple tool for runways. This allows somebody who's not got graphical design knowledge or how to mask or how to use Illustrator, etc. And you just, with a purple pen in, in like a little WYSIWYG editor, you draw over the element that you don't want, and then with a text image, you say, text input, you say, replace this unit with a TV on it, and now it's taken the bed out and it's drawn a TV. So you were wrong, yes. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was literally the first picture I found, but it's a really good use case there is that, you know, as much as you, know, you want to tidy up your house when you're going to have it sold, you might have some things that you don't want in the corner. And so therefore, from a perspective, you know, for Hart here, which is an estate agent, or so the other estate agents, they could have a mode where it's like, what it could be like. You may not want to give those images because it might be false or it might be kind of deceiving, but maybe there's a uh, the, the possibility of having you know, a button where you can say, well, what would happen if it was Art Deco style? What happens if they, we had a uh, parquet floor instead of um, just kind of wooden flooring, etc. This next one, hopefully most of people have seen this example from Sony. So there's the Sony Photography Awards every single year and then uh, there was uh, an example of Boris, I think, who was a German photographer. Uh, he was a well-known photographer, and his submission this year wasn't actually uh, a real photograph. He'd use AI. So does anybody know? I think most people have seen this one. But it's, this was the one that was the winner. So this um, picture of these two ladies. The uh, awards were announced. It was on the screen. And then uh, basically a day later, he's like, it was me. It was AI. I made this with AI, um, and so then they replaced it with this one, and that's just one that I made myself. So, image. So in the example, you've got things like Mid Journey and Dali Two. These are uh, tools where you can give it a text command, and then it can create images for you. It can create scamps. It can create you different prototypes of images that you can use in your website. The next one. So. This is from Google, this is Google Music LM. This is where you can make a text request and then it will create music for you. If you notice then, it had kind of like something that sounded like words, but it doesn't have words at the moment, it just kind of makes noises that sounds like what it thinks 80s music sounded like. It's a great article from Kate on the Rose website about this and the copyright and the licensing questions that this does raise. And then most recently you might have heard of this one. So that's Drake and The Weeknd, which sounds pretty good. And so in the example there, it was synthesised voices. So there's so much audio out there of those two artists in interviews, in TV shows, etc., that you can create a, a, a synthesised audio track. And obviously, uh, I think it was um, Universal have had that taken down. There's examples from Oasis as well. And then we can combine a few of these together, so we then can combine a text prompt, which creates a script, which then creates a synthetic voice, which then creates a video as well on top of it to make little videos like this. So that example, two or three minutes, I had the chance to edit that as well. So it gave me a script that it would it suggested from the prompt. And then I could edit that if, if I wanted to go forward. So we can see that really the, the, the key is combining these technologies together to create an output that would have taken us, you know, hours, loads of meetings, quite a bit of cash to kind of get created. And it depends on the use case. So you might not want to use that for a TV advertisement, but maybe some as an internal training or some helpful uh, FAQ guides to have them voiced over on your website. This is where this technology is, is great. So how are we using it across the group? So we use it in, in copy processes. So that's looking at giving us content to uh, create the outlines for a copy. Um, and, and the SEO team will be going through some examples of that. 
integration into tools that will make our lives easier, do jobs for us quicker, and then helping us on everyday tasks and also on education. One of the great things it can do is that you can ask it to write code and then you can write it to explain that code to you uh, and you can then learn about how code works. So a few examples in Rabbit and Pork. So one of the things we do in Rabbit and Pork is we build Alexa skills for hotels, when we have uh, Alexas in hotels, and I have to come up with conversations to test my Alexa skill. There's the fire alarm that I forgot to tell everybody about. Um, and so in here, you can see it's rapidly writing me conversations of an, somebody ordering um, some food in a hotel. And then I can get that to do five more versions of that. And then I can get that to output that in um, YAML code, which is the testing code that we use on our, our tools. So before, I would have to write all of these conversations out manually or ask somebody else to do it. But also, I would tend to write the things that I knew it could do, or I'd write the code that I knew it might break it, and I wanted to test it. Another tool we have is VoiceFlow. So VoiceFlow allows us to design conversational experiences. And in here, they put an AI button. And here I've got the prompt, you know, what do you want to eat? And I click generate, and that will generate me another way of that um, prompt working, and then another five or six versions. So one of the things you want to have in an Alexa skill is variants of your conversations. And so this can quickly then create those variants for me. I will check them. I'll decide whether they're good or not. And we also have to have uh, training phrases that we give to Alexa. So this is again, very boring kind of manual job. And also it's always subjective to how I think training phrases should be done. And I can quickly press a button and it will generate me those 10 training phrases. So that's integrated into the tool. I didn't have to do anything. That's not my subscription. That's VoiceFlow are using that power of that technology. Reporting, we all hate reporting. Here's an example of a report that I can't get an, uh, an API to feed in directly. And so basically I'm saying, my spreadsheet looks like this. I want it like this. Can you create me a Google Apps script to do this for me? And it educates me on how I uh, use that script. Where do I put it? How do I run that script? So we've now got our spreadsheet, which is pasted in. Uh, I hit go to app scripts, click, click, press, go. So it's taken a, a process that might have been 16, 17 clicks every single Friday to now two or three clicks, 10 seconds, and it's in the format that uh, 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 Looker uh, Data Studio likes. So these are really kind of simple tasks, which with my limited programming knowledge, it probably would have taken me four or five hours to program that, but I can just ask it using natural language to create that script for me. So what's on the horizon? Two things you will have heard of is plugins. So this is the idea is that as a business, you can create a plugin that allows chat GTP to come into your data and grab some information out of that. So in this example, it's Wolfram Alpha. I think it's a restaurant recommendation and it's um, open table. So here now, when you're having a conversation, it automatically decides that this question uh, needs to go to open table to grab that information about your restaurant. And so later on, the paid search team will be talking about some of the limitations of currently how ChatGTP works. It hasn't got context about your account, your AdWords account, your performance, etc. So if these plugins come available in the future, there's a possibility that you could be having a chat with ChatGTP and then it could jump into your AdWords account via one of these plugins and then pull out that information that you require much, much quicker than being able to click um, around and find that information. Or if you don't know where that information in AdWords is, but you know how to ask the question, you can get that simply. And the next one is custom language models. So there's a little demo here from Google. We'll build a campaign for simple, healthy snacks, highlighting the ingredients of its most popular granola bar. Generative AI makes simple text prompts really powerful. For example, with a simple prompt, I can describe the image I would like, add a sentence or two about the desired content, click generate, and here we go. With the power of generative AI, I now have custom social media, blog, and email campaign posts that I can use across my marketing channels. From there, I can refine further. I can edit my image. I can make changes to content. And I can make text edits directly. I select the pairing of the image and text that I like. And done. The application we built with Vertex AI's new generative AI capabilities has made it possible for business users to create a marketing campaign in minutes. 
So that example there, Vertex AI is, is a product within Google, um, Google Cloud Platform. And so there what they're doing is they're taking an existing language model, which kind of can output text, and then it's taking input from your business. So that could be all of your FAQs, all of your user information, all of your blogs, your brand guidelines, your kind of repository of images, and then it trains that model and then it gives you a custom model that only you can access, which is more tuned to your brand, etc. So this is something that Google, Amazon, NVIDIA, and all these different technology companies are going to be providing to businesses. And it's a case of then working with somebody to create that model for you to then be plugged into your business. Uh, interestingly, did anybody see the mistake with the pictures? Annie, our FD, pointed out really quickly is that you don't use eggs when you're making flapjacks. But that's a really good example is that if you maybe have source that to somebody and they put eggs in the background, you could have in that example there just said remove the eggs and it's gone. So it's about speed uh, and to be able to build these types of things. So this is something that's coming down the line, so it's custom uh, language models. So that's all from me for now. We're going to jump over to the SEO team now um, and Mark's going to cover off examples of where uh, AI can and cannot be used.